Hello, and thank you so much for agreeing to interview with me. Um, if we can start, would you please introduce yourself and give us a bit of background on who you are? Sure. My name is Carla Bruce, and I am one of the organizing committee for the Root and Bold Women's Show held every year here in um, Binghamton, New York. And as my background, I, um, I was a former restaurant owner and also in Binghamton. And I'm originally from New York City, moved to Binghamton to open the restaurant with some friends. And after that, um, I left the restaurant business after 10 years. But um, during that time, I developed a friendship with several artists in the area that used to display art at the, um, at the restaurant. And so I continue trying to facilitate and having um, artwork shown and seen by joining the Root and Bold group um, and just diving right in and trying to make the art scene in Binghamton something that would attract a lot of viewers, a lot of interest. And we've been successful, very successful. That's very interesting. And I'm glad that you mentioned that you were in the restaurant scene for a while, but then mm -hmm. moved out of it. And now you are a member in creating the Root and Bold Women art show. So for those that don't know, would you be able to tell us about what the Root and Bold Women art show is? It's a show that um, originated in fall of 1996. One of our community members, artist Susan Jablon, um, was in charge of the gallery at City Hall. It was a huge gallery space. And she had this idea to um, showcase artists who weren't necessarily mainstream. They were more emerging artists and their art was a little bit left of center, meaning it was not what you would normally see in an art gallery. Um, so she put out a call to a bunch of women artists locally. And um, we got some response, she got some responses from artists as far away as hundred miles away from the city. And um, they participated in what would become the first rude and bold women's art show. Um, there was performance art as well as um, visual art and some music as well. And um, after that show was kind of, because there was a lot of nudity, it was kind of like considered controversial. And it ended up with Susan even losing her job, her volunteer status at the art gallery because there was so much nudity. But then um, she passed the torch on to another group of us who decided that we would want to continue the show. And it took a couple of years. Um, we took a hiatus, we planned. And at the, the fall of 2001, actually September of 2001 is when we continued the art show it was after 9-11 and we decided to go ahead and you know, do the what we had planned. Um, and put the art show together. We've been doing it every year since then. And with the exception of last year with the COVID, we weren't able to do it, but we are planning on doing it again this year, this fall. That's amazing, that's amazing. And it's just crazy how much it's changed in time. How you said, because there was nudity in one of the first shows, Susan actually lost her position, but I'm glad that she didn't lose that motivation to continue on with the show no. and pass it on to you all. Exactly. And we kept, we kept, the, <laughs> there was, there's still been in almost in every show, there's something, some nudity in, in every show because women, a div diverse group of women um, from all different backgrounds, there's something about um, the nude woman figure that plays into their art and their perception. And so there's always some nudity, but nobody seems to mind these days. I'm glad. Now, I, the name of your art show is called Rude and Bold Women. Can you tell us what a Rude and Bold Woman is or explain more on the title, if possible? Well, we chose that Rude and Bold Women because there was an old dictionary that had a definition of, um, 
I think what the word, I forget what the word was that we looked up, but the definition was women who were rude and bold. It was like an old English dictionary. Oh. And so we just used that title, rude and bold, because we thought it just fit. It had a little bit of humor in it, in it as well. And so um, it just stuck. We said, how about rude and bold women? And it was like, yeah, let's, and we even um, copyrighted it so that nobody else can use that um, name for their art show. It belongs to us. I'm glad. And I like that the show is called Rude and Bold Women because in a sense, it kind of takes back the derogative like nature that those words have and creates a whole new beautiful meaning, like reclaiming it and making it something beautiful, which I think is pretty Exactly. Cool. And that was our initiative. That was what we wanted to have happen. Let me ask, what do you believe mm -hmm. creates the Rude and Bold Women art show? For example, is it the type of art that the artists are doing, the people that show up to these events? You all, or is it a collaboration? Will you say it's a collaboration of all these things that puts together the Rude and Bold Women art show? It's a mix of everything. Um, we get so many different types of art and so many different types of women who apply. We get women in their 80s. We get teenagers. Um, and we get so many different types of work. It's uh, And each artist has their own interpretation of what root and bold means to them. To someone, root, just the act of making art is something bold for them. We had um, an artist in their 80s who applied and we accepted her because just the fact that she could make art at her age, she had never done it before. And it's something she always wanted to do was a lifelong dream. And all of a sudden there she was making art. That was her, to her, that was being bold because she had been sheltered and timid. She lived a quiet, very quiet life. So the fact that she made art and even applied for it to be in a show was something that was very bold for her. When she explained that in her artist statement, we were like, we have to put her in the show. And her work wasn't necessarily controversial. She did landscapes, but it was the fact, the motivating force behind her producing that work was what was bold. And so that's what we, you know, we went, we went with. Um, so it's the artists, we get a lot of different kinds of artists. And then the people who come to see the show, it's always on a first Friday. So it's always a very, very busy event. We always get hundreds of people who come through the show for that weekend, for that event. And we get all kinds of people. We get students, we get um, people from out of town, we get visitors, we get just everybody coming into Binghamton. It's usually on a first Friday. So there's other art galleries that are open and have access for people to come and see art, but they make it the point to stop at our show. So that helps us. Um, the fact that so many people want to see the show, that really makes a difference to us. And it motivates us to try to put something together each year that's like spectacular that people are gonna wanna see and wanna talk about. We always have news cameras there. The news always comes by our show. They know they're gonna see something that they don't normally see. Um, and as far as the committee, we're a good mix of people. Um, we're com the women are completely different, different walks of life, dif different ethnicities, and we all come together and bring our own perspective um, from our lives into what we wanna see in the show and how we wanna put the show together, how we wanna curate it. So it's a mix, everything comes together. We all, everything comes together just to, to make the show special every year. It's something you, I'm very proud of. That's beautiful. You can definitely see that it's a collaborative force. It's not one person doing something, but it's a team working to build something yes. beautiful. And the artists themselves, they help in creating this beautiful event and everyone in the community comes out to see it. So that's definitely something I would love to see one day. Yeah. Now, you mentioned in your last um, in your last response that it's something that everyone that everyone can participate. Any any woman can participate in this. 
what is your thoughts on how the Rude and Bold Women Arts Show helps to empower women in marginalized communities, such as women of color? We make a concerted effort, especially I do, to reach out to um, women of color, especially to encourage them to apply. We have so many talented artists, women of color in this community, and they weren't, they, for whatever reason, they weren't reaching out to us when we put the call out. They weren't reaching out to us to put their work in. So I made it a point before the show even began, before we planned the, the show for the year, to get emails, to reach out and say, we're doing this show. I love your art. You need to put a piece of art in this show. So I've had to be, and I, I mean, this was a few years ago. Now it's a little bit um, easier for them to feel comfortable, um, you know, entering their work into the show. But for a while I had to really reach out and say, we, I wanna see your work. Your work needs to be seen. I want to see it in the show. Please submit something into the show. You know, and we have, you know, we there is an admission fee because we don't we have to pay rent on the space and lights and supplies and all that. So we do have an entry fee. And we made it so that if there was anybody who like students or sometimes women of color who you know have other responsibilities, um couldn't afford the entry fee, we would do waivers so that we would absorb the fee just to make sure that we have that representation. We wanted that representation in the show. And it's not like it's a juried show or anything. It's just artwork that's on the walls for the sake of beauty and for the sake of being seen. There's no prizes we give out. People can vote for their favorite you know, piece that they like, we allow people to do that and we'll tally up votes, but you know, there's no prize, there's no monetary gain or anything. We just love art and we want to see all women represented from all walks of life and represented. And we want them in the show. We want them, their artwork to be seen. I love that. And as a artist myself, I can um, attest to the fact that sometimes it may be, women may be well, for me, I may feel out of place showcasing my work at some places. For example, with my film that I was recently telling you about that I made, I was presenting that to a mostly white community. And it's not that I don't want them to see my work. Of course, I want them to see my work, but it becomes a little nerve wracking when you see that there's not many people of color also doing the same work as you or in these positions to have these conversations with you because then the pressure goes all on to me to answer all these questions or just be, be there presenting these pieces. But I've learned to grow comfortable with being uncomfortable in spaces that I need to be in. So that's mm -hmm. something that it stood out to me. And also when you said that you reach out to them, that's really powerful that you do that because sometimes we may feel that our art or our pieces are not good enough or strong enough or even worthy enough of being seen by other people. But once we are put into those spaces or once someone reaches out and tells us, hey, this is beautiful and this needs to be seen, that helps to really push you out of that shell or that space that you're in or that box and just go on and create the content and allow people to see that content. So exactly. That, that's that's our goal. And I, I love that. That's a beautiful goal. Let me ask you this. So Rude and Bold Women, the art show itself is, in my opinion, a voice for the oppressed. What would you say is your opinion on art as a voice for the oppressed? And do you believe that Rude and Bold Women allows for a space to, allows for a space, gives a space for women to speak their minds through their art? Um, yes, question. I'm sorry. It, no, I, I get it. I understand the question. Um, we have allowed or women have allowed themselves to, to express through their work, things that they feel that have oppressed them. So that's, but that's only one aspect. In addition to, 
um, being a venue for people to speak about, about things like domestic violence. We've had work that addressed domestic violence. We've had work that um, addressed um, rape. We've had work that addressed um, fat shaming. We've had all kinds of that type of art um, and expression in the shows in the past years. But there's also been a space for just joy, for women to just express the joy that they have in their lives. So there's a duality there. On one, on one wall, you can have a very somber piece that expresses you know, something dark and that this woman needed to um, you know, express. And then on the wall opposite, there can be something that's just so joyful and so, you know, that woman is expressing so, a completely different sentiment. And there's room for both of that or for all of that expression in the show and even in the same show, you know, we've, we've tried to curate it that way so that we get a mix. It's not all one type of art or one genre. We get a mix of, of um, artistic styles, if you will. And that's pretty cool, I would say, because some art pieces, some art pieces speak to the situations that people are going through, and one could never know what one is going through. One could be going through something dark, and that comes out through their art, or one could be experiencing a loving life, like you said, creating joyful art, and that can be experienced as well. So I like that Rude and Bold Women doesn't have a, how you say, theme. So for example, saying that this year's theme is renaissance in the modern day like there's no theme it's just a space to showcase what it is that you're feeling or what it is that you want the world to see about you or about the world itself we we did have a theme one year i believe it was 2016 and the theme was shiros who we wanted everybody who put a piece of work into the show to put something in that expressed a shiro, a shiro. Who are your heroes? Who are your woman heroes? We wanted to see that. And we got a wonderful response that year. Um, all kinds of different um, art, types of art. We got some poetry even as well. Um, so yeah, that was a big hit, but that was the only time we've ever actually had a theme. Would you like to continue on with the idea of a theme? Because the Shiro's theme sounds pretty cool to me. We've thought, we've thought about it. We haven't come up with a good theme. We talk about it every year and then we say, no, let's just open it up and see what we get. Um, we've talked about it. So at some point we may do a theme again, but we haven't decided. Maybe this year will be the year of the theme <laughs> with a theme again. We, we never know. But we've only done it that one time, but it's definitely not, you know, off the table. We could definitely consider doing it again. I definitely like the idea of the Shiro's, the Shiro's theme because it's open enough to go any direction you want, but it's exactly. focused on representing exactly. someone that is a Shiro. Exactly. So we're talking about this year's show. What are some of your goals for the Root and Bold Women? Or what were some of your goals for last year with like everything that happened with COVID? I know that the show couldn't progress, but what, are, what, what were you some of your goals or what are some of your goals? Well, this year we want to see if we can include, we were talking about including some um, performance art. Um, meaning dance, the space that we have that we normally um, use, utilize for the show isn't that big, but we have the opportunity to possibly get a bigger space this year. So if so, in, it would be nice to have some more performance art, um, dance or some other you know, performance component to the show. Um, we're one, not 100% sure that we'll still be able to have, I mean, the, the space, even though it's, you know, it's can hold like 200 people, we don't necessarily want 200 people in there, you know, at one time. So we don't even know if we're gonna be able to, to do it, 
this year. Um, we're planning on it. I've already contacted the space where we normally use the gallery that we normally use. Yeah. And um, it's available. We do it in the first weekend in October. Um, but if not, we are talking about doing something virtually and putting it online, meaning that we get all the artwork in, we hang, we hang a show and then actually present it as a virtual event online. Mm -hmm. um, if we can't get people into the, into the space because of COVID restrictions. So yeah. we're, we're, we're still bouncing around some ideas, but that would be a nice thing. I think a virtual show would be nice anyway, if we could do it for people who can't get out and who can't get to downtown Binghamton and still want to see the show, it would be nice to have an online event, I think. So that would be something that I'd like to see happen. I, for one, would love to see this show. And being that I'll probably be located in New York City, a virtual show would be beautiful. But however, I would try my hardest to make the trip up. Oh, that would be nice. But you did mention the, speaking of the virtual show, I was going to attend, I I was going to attend one for El Museo del Barrio in New York City. They were doing mm -hmm. a virtual showcasing of, I believe, New York City artists, New York City afro Latinx artists. And I wanted to go, but my schedule clashed and I couldn't make it. But they mm -hmm. made their virtual show work. And mm -hmm. I have no doubt that you can also make your virtual show yeah. work. I'm going to check that out and see if there's something online that I can... I'll send you I can that peek at. right after this. Let me just write it down. Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to see it and see how they, what it looked like. Yeah. I might be butchering what the topic of the art show that they did was, but it definitely was something that interested me. It's been so many years since I've been there. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I would say at least 15, 20 years that since I've been to that museum down there. I've actually never gotten the chance to go to that museum, which is crazy because my high school is around the block from that museum. But I went to the museum right next door to it. Mm -hmm. But I really want to go to the Museo de Barrio because I feel that it just captures everything that I'm studying. It has that aspect of yeah. art. It has that aspect of empowering people of color. And it has that aspect of just like film communication that just ties everything together. So back to the Root and Bold Women Art Show. What mm -hmm. your most exciting memory or one of the most exciting memories that you have working on while working on the show? Um, let's see. Oh, I, that's a curveball. Well, every year we just decide that we're going to invite some notables and the last year that we had the show, 2020, we invited Michelle Obama. And oh, she did not come, she wasn't able to attend, but she sent us a beautiful, we had it framed and everything. She sent us a beautiful response and you know, good luck and best wishes for the show and everything. And we thought that was really exciting that she acknowledged us because I know she must get hundreds of invitations or, you know, offers to, you know, appear or to come to different events every day. And the fact that she took the time to acknowledge, and I don't know if somebody forged her, her signature, there's probably a signature stamp or something, but it was really nice. We were like shocked when we got it. Um, but yeah, and to have an artist enter artwork who wasn't from Singapore, all the way in Singapore, she heard about the show and she's like, I want to enter some work. And she contacted us through email. And of course we were like, please. But that was the farthest away we've ever had anybody send artwork. She shipped work from Singapore to be in the show and it was you know somebody bought it actually they loved it they bought the, the the piece yeah so those are two exciting things it's small potatoes but this is Binghamton New York so we got, we got excited 
you have to get excited about those things michelle obama yeah. replied, that's amazing that's yes. amazing wow we thought so. that's amazing and to have someone all the way in singapore know about your show that truly shows that yeah. it's international that anyone anyone could really apply yeah, yeah. wow that that's amazing i i'm a little I'm a little in shock too yeah. in the emotions of how Michelle Obama replied and wrote yeah. a beautiful note. Wow. Yeah. I love Michelle Obama. She's one of my favorite, favorite people. Yeah, I too. <laughs> now, what would you say is one of the most challenging things you face? Um, one of the challenges is that because the committee is it's the time time constraints i mean this is a labor of love for us we do it because we really want to make a difference in the art world and have and make a difference for artists and um because we all have other nine to five jobs we sometimes get ourselves, you know, it feels like we almost bite off a little bit more than we could chew sometimes. Yeah. We always manage to get it done, but there's times when it gets very stressful, putting it all together gets stressful. I'm, I'm imagining that that would be for any type of art show or anything, but it seems for us, um, for our committee to be a little bit more because we're so hands-on. The, we hang the work ourselves. The artists don't hang their work. We curate it. We get all the art in. We curate the show, what pieces we want to go where. And then we actually hang the artwork ourselves. We have, we want to do that. We, we are hands-on. Um, and I think to me, that's the most challenging part is organizing once we get all the art they're organizing it and actually putting together the physical aspect of the show is the most challenging for me. I would imagine that because it's so hands-on and something so personable, it does take a bit more time and it is time consuming. Like you said, it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. so There's a lot of late nights. I mean, I, we would, I would go from work and go down to the gallery and then stay for hours with no dinner, nothing. And for me to miss a meal, that means that means I love doing something I love. Yeah. But you know, we're we're there with hammers and nails and on the ladder and we're doing everything ourselves. So it's a big deal. And I hope that people who go to your art show or just hear of it can see and hear the hard work that's being put in by you all. Like this is not something that is just done for a paycheck, but this is something that's done out of love to of spread love. this beauty that is art, the Root and Bold Women Art Show. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. Yes. Now, what advice to close off, what advice do you have for someone interested in sharing their artwork with the Root and Bold Women Art Show? Or Don't be shy. <laughs> Not to be shy to when we're, we have a website, um, rootandboldwomen.com there's all kinds of information about past shows and as soon as we decide on a date for the coming year show that information will be added as well as all of the information um, that you would need to apply and my phone number my home phone number is even on that website so there's a question. Somebody can call me directly. If you don't want to email Root and Bold, you can call me directly and I will answer any questions that anybody has about the show. I'm happy to do that. And that's love when you give your phone number. Yeah, that's I don't have love. a <laughs> Root and Bold does not have a business phone number. The business phone number is my number. But, you know, don't be shy. If you have something that you want to express, share it with us and, you know, let's see if we can make it happen. That's what we want to have happen. We want people who wouldn't necessarily have their artwork seen or wouldn't necessarily feel that they're, you know, comfortable sharing their artwork to branch out, you know, and to, you know, just take a chance, take a chance and contact us. Let us know if you're interested. 
we would love to see some new artists this year. And this is all for the October show that is being planned. Yes, we're planning the show. We're planning the show for 2021 in October, yes. I just want to write that down from my personal mm -hmm. This is definitely something that is so powerful, so interesting, and something that's moving people. It, can, it has the power to give people a platform that sometimes they may not have. In my recent literary, literary review, I was focusing on how art has in, infected, impacted, <laughs> impacted mm -hmm. women throughout the decades. And I wanted to focus, narrow it down onto women of color and how in the 70s through the 90s, well, let's focus more on the 60s and 70s, women of color, specifically Black women, did not have the resources to create these pieces of art or anywhere to showcase them while Black men were getting those platforms, mm -hmm. Black women were not getting those platforms. So a group of Black women created a program to sustain themselves with resources and places to showcase their work solely for Black women by Black women. And that was something so beautiful that stood out to me. And I would want to say that Root and Bold Women is helping give that platform to all women, but is it's giving and it's getting back. So it's something that I find mm -hmm. really beautiful. And for my last question, do you have any advice for someone who wants to start their own show, their own art show per se? Just be brave and just do it. There's a lot of resources out there. Don't be afraid to ask. I mean, we asked um, for space and we were pleasantly surprised that people offered to give us space at no cost. I mean, of course that didn't last forever, but for the first couple of shows, people were like, no, you don't have to rent here. We just want to have some artwork. So here, use this space. Um, now we pay rent um, for the gallery space, but don't be afraid to ask. There's a lot of resources out here and things have changed with the internet. The internet makes networking and, and connecting with people who can help you or other artists, it makes it so much easier um, than having to, um, you know, do everything with physical mail. Yeah. You know, we used to send out invitations and in the mail, physically mail. I would take a thousand invitations to the post office to mail. You know, it's, you don't have to do that now. You can invite on the internet. You can do everything on the internet. So don't be afraid. There's so many resources out there and just, you know, decide what you want to do, find the space, connect your artists and just go for it, make it happen. It's, it's not difficult. And if you love what you do, you can do it. You can make it happen. If you love it and you have a love for art, you can make it happen. Thank you so much. That was such a beautiful answer. And thank you for taking time out of your day to do this interview. This is it was my pleasure. Amazing. Let me just end. I'm honored. <laughs>